JavaScript is finally getting array grouping methods, which means we don't have to rely on Lodash to be able to group our objects by some kind of a key. And it's already at proposal stage 3 of ECMAScript, which means it's going to land in Node.js and other browsers very soon, although it's already in Chrome 117. Let's take a look at how it works. Alright, so imagine we have an array of fruits, and here banana and avocado have the same amount of calories, 28. And calories are something that we want to group the objects by, all right? So meaning banana and avocado are going to go together in one array within our object and strawberry is going to be the second item within this object. So what you would normally do, given that you also don't use Lodash helpers, is we would create an empty object first and then we would loop through these array items, meaning the fruits, and we would check, first of all, if this key already exists within the object. If not, then we would instantiate it. Otherwise, we simply push the fruit inside this calories key. All right. And if I run node index.js to see what output would look like, it would be something like this. Obviously, we have our object and 3 and 28. 28 consists of banana and avocado and strawberry lives within 3. Okay, this is self-explanatory. But... Of course, imagine a different situation where you would want to make your code look a bit more elegant. You would probably use some functional programming, meaning a reduce method on the array. Okay, same logic here. Again, we're pushing the fruit to the accumulator and we carry on. And at the end, if I save this and run the same command, we will get the same output. Okay, so far so good. And now, luckily, we are getting this new method called group by and it works with maps as we see here and also works with objects in this case i want to use an object because i don't need a map so this is what we're going to use but before that let's go a bit deeper and see what it actually how it actually works so an object dot group by accepts items which should be an iterable such as an array and a callback function and a callback function which is similar to other methods other callbacks receives an element that the item that the that the iterable is currently on and some kind of index optionally if you want to use it but keep in mind that the return value is going to be a null prototype object okay this is not a normal object this is a null prototype object what is what is it actually well we're going to read about this in a second but first of all let's go back to our application or our code and also make sure that we import or use some kind of a polyfill okay because this feature is still in the proposal stage of stage three, meaning it hasn't landed in every browser yet. Because if we go back to MDN and we scroll a bit down, passing the examples, we will see that it's already in Chrome, Edge and Firefox. So Edge and Chrome number 117, it's in nightly Firefox, meaning you, it's behind the flag, but it's not really supported in other browsers. So the good news is it's probably going to be released this year meaning it's also going to be landed in the newest version of Node because Node also uses Chromium, so they're kind of bound together, which is great. But for now, we still have to use a polyfill. And what I'm going to do is write import core.js because I already have installed the latest version of core.js, which includes all the coolest features that are already in the proposals. So this is going to work well for us. And also make sure that you have type module because otherwise these kind of imports wouldn't work. So you either have type module or you rename .js into .mjs. All right, I guess you already know that, but let's close the sidebar, save our file, clean the console and run our previous command again. And we get exactly the same answer. How cool is that? Now we previously talked about non null prototype objects, right? What does it even mean? Let's go back to MDN and I have the second tab explaining what null prototype objects are. Well, it turns out a null prototype object is, is not a normal object. Meaning if I scroll down here, so this is, here's a normal object and you can have like usual methods of objects like value of, has own property and different things. It works on normal objects, but it throws an error for the null prototype object. So normal methods that you're used to, that objects we would usually have, will not work for this op fruit 
by fruits by calories objects, all right? This is a non-prototype object, meaning it doesn't have a, its own prototype. It's kind of clean. And why, you would ask like, why do they even exist if they are lacking methods? Well, for many reasons, but first of all, first of all, in order not to clutter the prototype, because it's going to be considered like a completely new object without any history. And it also actually prevents a lot of security risks, risks meaning an intruder is not able to pollute the prototype of an object. All right. So this is it, guys. I hope you can use it with your own, within your own projects. Just make sure you have the polyfill. And if you like this kind of videos, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.